You've just had. Oh, that sounded good. Yeah. Bonjour. One, two, three, four. Play now with please. Play now with please. Talking about the opera business. Lance. Welcome, welcome once again to Late Night with Liz. And for the first time in forever. Okay, since last week, I'm your host, Liz Sutfin. It's been a wild week here in quarantine, but not nearly as wild as out in civilization. Fox Sports has announced that the NFL is considering pumping in artificial crowd noises if the football season goes forward without spectators this fall. I mean, how ridiculous. Okay, that's enough. In arts news, Disney Theatrical has announced that the Broadway production of Frozen will sadly not be reopening whenever Broadway resumes performances. I guess the cold really did bother it anyway. You get it? Because we get the cold is a type of coronavirus. It's fine, moving on. An American man flew into the Frankfurt airport this week in an attempt to visit his German girlfriend. Though Germany has closed its borders to foreigners, he attempted to skirt this by dressing as an airport janitor to sneak through passport control. Sadly, he was intercepted when the airport employees realized he spoke no German. And hey, we've all been there. Had he been successful, Germany would have greeted him with its latest innovation in social distancing. Customers at the Café Rota in the city of Schwerin must wear hats with two swimming pool noodles affixed to the top to maintain proper distances. Begging the question, should everyone be giving this a try? Hello darkness, my old friend. Meanwhile, American restaurants are practicing social distancing a bit differently. The Inn at Little Washington, a three Michelin star restaurant in Virginia, will be opening later this month at 50% capacity. The empty tables, and this is true, will be filled with mannequins in fancy attire. Servers have been instructed to read the specials and serve drinks to their inanimate guests. While my guest tonight might not have any Michelin stars, he is a Grammy award-winning artist and our first tenor here at Late Night with Liz. I'm excited to give a warm welcome to our guest this evening, Joshua Guerrero. So sit back, don't buy tickets to Frozen, because it's over, so don't do that. Let's go have some fun. Hi everyone. I am absolutely thrilled to introduce Joshua Guerrero. Hey. So we don't know each other very well. We've interacted a couple times, and I think that first time was at Aspen. Yeah, it was our first In... and only opera together. And then we re-met true, when true. we were both making our debuts, respectively, at Glyndebourne. That's right, 2018. But we didn't have a we didn't have a heck of a lot of interaction, and so I've really enjoyed getting ready for this and doing a whole bunch of research on you. <laughs> which is what any good or mediocre interviewer would do. And I have learned, you went on to make a whole bunch of debuts in major houses, Glyndebourne, Covent Garden, Santa Fe. I could go on and on, but we'd be here all day. <laughs> which makes me wonder, were you always an opera buff? Well, um, no, no, actually, this is the, the last thing I ever thought I'd, I'd be, to be honest with you. I, I at one point, w wanted to be a doctor. Uh, I wanted to be a, a uh, man of the cloth. Uh, I, I went to a uh, seminary for a while. I, I wanted to, I think as a child, wanted to be a pilot. There, there were so many other things that I had in mind, and, and the last thing ever <laughs> was, was an opera singer. So you had all of these paths that you were looking to pursue and this is what you chose. Was there a, was there a moment? Is there something about it? I actually got into it because my, my former voice teacher, my first voice teacher, uh, Jones Ajak, told me about a little opera competition in Palm Springs. And, and uh, yeah, she told me that they were giving out money. So I said, okay, cool. 
I, at that point, I was a struggling artist. I was I was a social worker uh, on throughout the week, and and on the weekends, I was I was you know doing doing gigs. Yeah, a lot of them in the OC, weddings, funerals, corporate events, things like wow. that. So, and then you you went on to win quite a few more competitions, one of those being winning second place at Operalia. And I, and what, so what, was, what was that like coming from a, coming from a place of not knowing this is what you wanted to do to suddenly being on these big these big stages of the world? Well, you know, I, the the one thing with me, I've I've always just been open, right? I, I think why not? I was in my second or third year as a young artist, and. And I think I, I had auditioned for it just to like, eh, let's, let's see if I can do something. And, <laughs> and I was surprised every time I advanced, like, wait, <laughs> have, have you checked out the competition? Are you sure? It was, it was so sweet because it, it happened at home in Los Angeles. And what? so um, a, a lot of my family, a lot of my friends got to see this moment happen. And not only am I an opera singer now, but my sister's an, an opera costumer. No it's kidding. So cool. Yeah, it's like it's like the, the 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 art form picked us. It's like okay, girls, let's go. So has that changed at all the way you uh, experience music? Is opera now the only thing you listen to? I listen to it a lot, mm -hmm. um, but I also like to keep like a healthy, you know, uh, regimen going with with other genres. So what uh, are you listening to right now? Nonstop from Drake's album Scorpion. <laughs> and funnily enough, it it reminds me of of. Uh, of Glyndebourne because music, including opera, uh, certain things that I listen to, they're always bookmarks to certain events in my life. And yeah, it's, it's so it's, interesting, it's, isn't it? Oh, wow, it's so cool. Like I, I listen to something that kind of just calls me back to that moment. So have you listened to any operas that you're like, wow, I remember exactly where I was when I did this? Like La Boheme is literally one of my favorite operas and and somehow it'll it'll find its way into the, the playlist that like Spotify puts on. And you've I'll, done Rodolfo quite a few times. Yeah, I've done it a few times. I was supposed to be doing it now in Berlin. Um, we'll get, we'll get back. We'll well, get I'm back. so sorry you're not, but I'm also happy that you're here with me. So what can I say? Do I'm... you think you are more of a Rodolfo or like a Duke of Mantua? <laughs> what, do, what do you resonate with more? The people want to know. <laughs> well, um, I'm definitely more of a Rodolfo, but the Duke comes out from time to time. It's funny because, oh. uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm from Vegas originally. Okay. And I got a lot of my, my Vegas brothers out there and, you know, we'll go out, we'll have a good time. And they're like, oh man, the Duke's coming out because I, you know, I start to, I get a couple of these in me and, and, you know, <laughs> yeah. We can all do a little bit of my, it's one of my buddies who went out and saw uh, me do uh, Duca in, uh, in London. And I think it was his first opera, which was so cool. It's so cool when you're able to, to give that to somebody, yes. you know, provide that experience. Like, oh, this is going to be your first opera. Cool. Let me explain it to you. You know, Verity, blah, blah. And he saw me on that stage and it was, it was, uh, it's one of their famous productions. And I, you know, we're in this Italian mob get up and, and I, you know, I'm there with this bespoke suit, you know, getting my dupe <laughs> on and he's like, oh man, it's like Vegas. This can be a thing that other people can understand whether or not they grew up with it or whether or not they know anything about it. I, I didn't grow up with it. I still enjoy it. And Absolutely. I enjoy other things. And Something that we were exploring as we were getting ready for this, you and I, is that you told me that, that Late Night with Liz, this show really resonates with you. And I'm very happy. Thank you. But we want to share why we love something right. with people who don't really know about it. And there are people who have expressed that they feel what we are doing is not good for our brand as performers in this industry. And I would like to know how you feel about that and if you would have a response. I think, I think part of our job is to be as authentic as possible and to be able to relate our passions to whoever, whoever we can. Is there a lot of content out there? Yeah, sure. So it's okay. Yeah. You know, it, it, the, the cream rises to the top. What, right? what that says to me is when there's a lot of content, then I believe there's something for everybody and there's Absolutely. room for everybody to enjoy it in the way that they want to. Absolutely, it's, it's this wonderful buffet that we, we, can, we can visit any day. I just think that the things that, that really shine the most are when people are completely authentic and, and really show their, their passion for whatever it is they're doing, whatever their medium is. And it's, that's what I'm interested in because that, that's the human connection that we all need, that we all long for. I completely agree. And I think that that is why 
I have enjoyed this conversation so much <laughs> because it's a, an opportunity that I haven't had in the past to get to know who you are outside of our work. Yeah. And I, I want to know where I can send people so that they can learn <laughs> more about you from um, you. I've taken a bit of a respite for like five or six weeks. I, I haven't sung any opera whatsoever, but now I'm like, okay, let's get in this. Let's get in this. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to plug in my Instagram, Please do. Uh, my Facebook fan page okay. uh, it's that I am Joshua Guerrero. And uh, I think those are, those are the two. I will link them right under here with the power of the internet and editing software. Hey. I think it's important that people know, know that the people they see on stage are fully formed humans who love other things and <laughs> right. who got to this in different ways. And you're a great example of that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I have some projects coming up uh, with Nicholas Brownlee as well. I'm working some things out here for a little concert, a live concert out in my neighborhood. Uh, don't worry, we're following uh, all the quarantine rules. Uh, yeah, it should, it should be interesting to, to, to document all of that. So I'm very excited for you. Yeah, it's going to be great. Well, thank you for being on. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. For this work. Cheers. Salud. <laughs>